This is a story of real heroism in appalling conditions. A testament to the durability of the human spirit. The journey was sold to the crew as an easy, grand adventure. How could things have gone so wrong? This great white wilderness is our playing field on which there is lying, cheating, stealing, malingering, as well as great displays of courage and humanity. William Laird McKinley, ship meteorologist, the Carlock. Supported by the Canadian government, a whaling ship, the Carlock, embarks on a mission to map the Beaufort Sea. The government needs to strengthen its claim to sovereignty in the Arctic. Wilhelmer Stephenson, the lead explorer, needs the government's money to finance the trip. With Stephenson is Captain Robert Bartlett. An experienced polar navigator, Captain Bartlett raises concerns about the ship's suitability to what might be encountered in the Arctic. However, Wilhelmer Stephenson an anthropologist with an ego the size of the Arctic says that the 30-year-old whaling ship is the soundest and best adapted for their purposes. The crew were a pretty rowdy bunch to start with, like the cook, and, and I believe he was one that, that used needles. They, they were not gentlemen. They had some pretty rowdy people, I guess, and, and uh, uh, drinking people and drug people. And, uh. The crew of 23, with sophisticated film equipment, set sail for the last of the great white patches on the map, the Beaufort Sea. For William Laird McKinley, it is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Like some of the crew, the 24-year-old Scott is totally unaware of the danger the ship is about to face. The Carlick sets sail for the north. Bartlett is not as sure of the Carlick's capabilities as Stephenson. Bartlett, who has been to the Arctic before with Admiral Perry, the world-famous explorer, knows that the Arctic ice has destroyed many ships. And the extent of the ice the ship is encountering is a worry to him. As the ship struggles to make headway, Stephenson remains unperturbed. Bartlett knows the engines lack the power to navigate through the thick ice. And in the end, the ice is too much for the Carlock as she becomes firmly entrapped in the Arctic's icy clutches. Stephenson has made up his mind. All hope of progress for this year is ended. Now stuck in the ice for a month, Stephenson announces he is going ashore on a caribou hunt. This comes as a surprise to us. He has previously told us 
that in northern Alaska, the caribou are extinct. Uh, Stephenson deserted them. That's pretty strong language. They, they knew fairly well that there was no caribou for him to find, and it was 20 miles away to get to the coast uh, when he left the ship. And uh, um, why he left the ship, uh, some of the people on, who were left on the ship, and McKinley was one of them, uh, really believed that, that he just was leaving them and get them, escaping because they were going to be carried off and perish. Ten days. Stephenson has not returned to the ship. We are being carried away from the land in the grip of the ice pack, moving west, leaving an ever-widening expanse of Arctic sea between us and our leader. We feel as lambs left to the slaughter. For the crew, it was now their mission to keep their ship afloat, breaking the ice buildup as well as removing supplies to lighten the load. McKinley writes of ominous ice sounds, the twanging and drumming, the pressure of the ice against the hull. Bartlett knows the pressure of the ice will prove too great for the ship. He has the crew assemble on the ice, and as the ship's Victrola plays Chopin's funeral march, the car looks sinks into the icy waters. The crew is stranded. There has been no word from Stephenson. The only hope appears to be a small island, perhaps two, three, four weeks march from the site. Captain Bartlett cannot stay on Wrangell Island. He must continue south towards help. He's the crew's only hope for survival. I accompany the captain for about a half mile. We say goodbye and they are off, with their hopes and prayers speeding them on this long, lonely journey. On him depends any chance we have of leaving Wrangell Island alive. Months pass. There is no word from Captain Bartlett. Pessimism prevails. The crew believes Bartlett is dead. Frozen somewhere, out there in his desperate attempt to rescue his crew. Before too long, a horrible disease spreads throughout the camp, affecting many of the survivors. Uh, their, their bodies swelled up and, and they were in agony physically and, and they couldn't eat and they were parched and uh, it, 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 it must have been a ghastly experience for all of them. They just died in agony. My body looks horrible, writes 22-year-old scientist Bjorn Mammon. It is swollen up now so that I am frightened about myself. Indeed, I don't think this will end well. And they were not friendly, constant friction. With, with the added uh, stress of greed and wanting, wanting the little bit of food that was left. Anything but a pleasant relationship there. Tensions and conflicts are now common. There is petty thievery and fights over what little remains of the food. A man is killed. 
the group is on the edge of savagery. You know, we're, we're inclined to be uh, quick-tempered with, with a gun nearby. It could have been a knife, it could have been a gun, it could have been uh, hands throttling the other fellow people. We see that every day in the paper for far less reasons than they had. With the arrival of spring, there is a sense of hope. It is becoming bitterly cold once again. We are hungry, almost desperately hungry. The crew is worried that they will need to prepare for another winter, and they are unsure if they can do it again. A crew member startles us with a mighty roar. A ship! I duck back into the tent, fumbling for my field glasses. I tumbled out, and my heart missed a beat as I confirmed indeed there was a small ship in the distance. Perhaps she is not a rescue ship. We all stood there shoulder to shoulder, watching, hardly able to believe our eyes as a party of men disembark on the shore of the ice. We were saved. Captain Bartlett had got through. Bartlett traveled on foot for six months and after 1,200 kilometers reached safety, sending a ship back for his men. The joy of the crew is tempered by the knowledge of the losses. 11 crew members have died. Man has not conquered the Arctic, but merely survived her harsh embrace. <laughs>